there's a lot going on, of course, in, in the way people consume video. There's also changes in patterns. There's a massive rise in binge viewing. The viewing habits are, are changing very much depending on the content type. There's a lot of disruption to the value chain. I'm just going to give a little bit of background about, about what's happening in the, in the industry, the trends and what's happening in the broadcast market and the satellite broadcast market as we introduce our, our talks about next generation video networks. If you look at the viewing habits compared to a few years ago, where people just sat in the living room watching TV, things are very different now. Um, there's a lot of streaming uh, on-demand content, and the usage is soaring, especially amongst the younger demographics. They watch, they watch video, streaming video on their tablets, on their smartphones, uh, on their laptops. What is also happening is that the, the viewing habits are, are changing very much depending on the content type. Before, again, there was a TV, and whether you watch sports or news or your soap opera or your favorite series or films, you had the television to watch on, unless, of course, you went to the cinema. But now the, the content type is very much driving the, the future evolutions of television. If you look at the live premium sports market, this is the thing, the rights and the monetization of premium sports, that is what is driving all the pay TV platforms. That is the reason why people buy BT Sports and Sky in the UK. That's why B in Sports in Qatar have invested so many, 500 millions for English Premier League rights in the Middle East. So when it comes to linear TV, one of the big things is following your team, following your country on live TV, whether it's football or whether it's, it's major league hockey or whatever the sports. Live sports are one of the key drivers for, for linear TV and quality linear TV. So this is what's driving ultra high definition moving towards 4K. That's what people want. The, the absolute guarantee there will be no outages, no spinning little circles while they're trying to see the goal coming up and they've just missed the goal, they've just missed the wicket, they've just missed whatever it is. In other forms of, of, of content, things are very different. In short form content, short video clips, Everyone's watching it from YouTube now. They just watch video clips on YouTube. On longer, fo longer form content, whether it's programs or series, that's one of the reasons why Netflix be is be becoming so popular. Why it has such a massive uh, marketization value where it's more than doubled since the beginning of this year. There's also changes in patterns. There's a massive rise in binge viewing. 87% of... Uh, of subscription video on demand viewing is for binge viewing once a week. So there's a big change in the way people are actually consuming video content, which of course is driving the way that this, this TV and this video has to be provided to those viewers. With news, there's a big change as well. If you think of the recent um, disaster in China and Tianjin, most of the video clips you saw even on live TV were, were clips that have been uploaded to, the, to YouTube that have been shown by the news broadcasters. So the, the way that news is reported, fast news gathering is still important, uh, but a lot of people are catching live news breaking on, on Twitter and on social media, uh, YouTube. They will then come to TV for more in-depth analysis of trying to understand the news. Another big trend that... Um, that that is happening throughout the world. And this is something that is being enabled by technology and enabled by the economics of doing business. And what this is doing is fueling an entire new infrastructure, um, and there's no catchy term for it, but geographically dispersed thematic channels. So what I mean by that, and you may have seen the apps, um, Real Madrid TV, are using the Microsoft Cloud so that people that are fans of, of Real Madrid, that don't have to be in Spain, don't have to be in Europe, can be anywhere around, can still be part of this thematic uh, Real Madrid TV channel, but using the cloud. 
The same sort of thing for expat TVs. Uh, if you go to the Middle East, of course, there are lots of expat workers from around the world. And there's a lot of thematic channels for Filipinos living in the Middle East, Sri Lankans in the Middle East. Wherever you go, the same sorts of things are happening. So different communities are, are watching the same channels, but they're no longer in one geographic community. That community is dispersed around the world. In the end, what people want is the content. You have this adage of content is king, but it is no more uh, prevalent than now. And all of those things are, are indicative of what's happening in the broadcast transmission market. There's a lot of disruption to the value chain, and there's a lot of established players that are hurting badly because the economics have changed. But again, there's a lot of opportunity um, and there's also opportunity for, for existing suppliers like satellite. Now, with, with EU SATCOM, one of our big focuses, of course, is on satellite. And, and generally, the satellite is still being used and in still good shape. But due to the improve, increased complexity in the market, it is somewhat hidden from view. Which comes to the point of this conference and this diagram we have created for this component uh, is, is on next generation video networks. Now, how will the broadcast transmission players tackle and manage this change in the broadcast in, uh, market, the change in viewing habits, the change in the value chains?